Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a follow up of the last video. If you want to see this engine running and see my uh, interesting little exhaust setup, watch the previous video because this engine is not going to be running in this video. This video is going to be talking about uh, this type of carburetor and the linkages and the governor throttle and choke setup on it. I have another carburetor off one of these that we're going to be actually taking apart. I'm going to leave the carburetor alone that's on this because it is running. But we're going to pull the flywheel cover off, the air filter assembly. And we're going to show you exactly what to do to get to it and everything. And I apologize for the background noise. The locusts are carrying on big time. It's the first week of June. They're real, really active right now. So if you hear that, that's what that is. I never really cared too much about this type of a carburetor on these. There are good, reliable carburetors, but uh, just something about them I don't like. But I'm going to take the air filter off first and we'll see what size bolt we need for the bottom piece of the air breather assembly. Alright, so you got these four bolts right here. This is what holds the air breather assembly on. I'm going to take all these out and be careful not to drop it down the carburetor. If you can be taking the carburetor off clean, I guess it don't matter too much. But. little plate comes off that's what the your air filter mounts to so you keep that in intact there this whole thing should come off this just, just kind of sits down in here you see that rubber piece just sits down in here the vent tubes got us now I'll try to just pull up on it this can be a pain to hook it back up so be prepared for that okay that gets you access to the top part of the carburetor and sometimes you can get by with just taking the actual top piece of the carburetor part and just clean it out like i said we're not going to be doing anything to this carburetor but we've got another one that's identical to this it's already off so we'll look at it but i want to go ahead and take the flywheel shroud off so we can get to everything to show you how everything's set up on it and to do that there's a series of bolts holding this flywheel shroud on you got to take the screen off we're just going to look at uh, briefly where it's at and you got to take the fuel pump off in order to get to these two bolts that's on the bracket here so that's kind of annoying but uh, something you got to do so i'm going to start with taking the screen off just uh, it has to come off in order for the shroud to slide off this video may not show every single detail on the uh, carburetor removal like I said, we're just going to be looking at another one that I already have. It's off of another engine. But it, it'll show you how to clean the carburetor by itself. So now we got to take out all these bolts around here on the shroud. You get two 10 millimeter bolts and two over here. And the other ones are 12s, I think, or 13s. So I'm going to take these bolts out off camera and we'll look at the fuel pump part here in just a second. Okay, in order to get to the last bolt, you do have to remove the fuel pump. You can get by with just taking these two bolts loose here and kind of folding it out of the way, but I just want to take it completely off just to uh, make it easier to show everything. So we're going to take these two bolts out first here. Then I'm just going to take the uh, vacuum line loose from the valve cover here. That way you can see it better. This is another 13 millimeter. And this should be the last bolt in the flywheel shroud. You see that one right here I already took out. And you have two 13 millimeters on the other cylinder inside over there. should be able to pull the cover off yep okay now we can look at how the carburetor and everything set up on this so there's another bolt right here like this on the other side but you can't hardly get to it with anything I guess you might be possible to get a wrench at an angle and go but it's just gonna be really hard to do so usually on these what would be done 
and just take these two bolts out of the manifold here and you might want to get to pick up these manifold gaskets too and your whole carburetor is going to come off on this manifold which you'll see here in a minute on another carburetor that's identical to this but I want to go ahead and talk about all the linkages first and also this is the uh, fuel solenoid right here and this is a this is removable you can take a three quarter inch and take this out to gain access to clean that out this is actually a mixture adjustment screw it's got the EPA cap on it so you can remove to get full adjustment which mainly adjusts the idle side it don't really do a whole lot to the main side anyway like I said these four bolts here is what basically holds the intake manifold on then you got access to these two bolts to take the carburetor off the intake manifold and uh, you may or may not need an intake gasket here because this spacer so on some engines will serve as a the gasket but there is an actual gasket here so you have to be careful with that but it usually comes apart fairly easy so now let's swing around here and look at all the uh, choke and uh, throttle and governor linkages all right so we'll start with the simplest that's going to be the choke just get this is where your cable will come in on this clamp and hook into either one of these two holes depending on how much throw you got or pull on the choke and you just got a simple linkage it'll connect over here that's what closes, that's what works the choke plate. It's a pretty simple setup. I just wanted to show it first. Now we go on to the throttle. Now if you see this screw right here where the linkage hooks in, this is your idle speed adjustment screw. So if your engine's idling too low, you can adjust this up or down to whatever idle you need to set it to. Then you got a rod with a spring on it. I get asked all the time what the spring does on the, on the linkage that's wrapped around the linkage. All it does is keep tension on everything just to keep it tight so there'd be less slop on it. Now let's look at the rest of the linkages. It should be easier to see from the other side. Alright, so I gotta take you off the tripod for this one. Uh, see right here's the linkage that runs from the throttle plate of the carburetor. It runs down, it has a bend in it, and it ties in to the governor arm right here. You can see. Might be easier. I know it's going to be kind of hard to see everything in the shot, but it ties in right there on the end. And that little spring, you see it's got a connector piece right there that the spring, that the linkage spring ties into. There's the spring itself, and it ties in right here on this hook right here. And like I said, that's just for keeping tension between the linkages so there's less slop, slop in it. And you get another spring over here that connects to the governor arm. This is the governed idle speed, so... If you don't need a governed idle, you can actually bend this tab this way to release the tension on this. Then it's, it's going to rely completely on that adjustment, on the idle speed adjustment screw. But if you'd rather have a governed idle, turn that screw down and turn this one up until it's idle, and that'll control the idle too. But a lot of times it's not necessary, it just depends on the application. Alright, so your throttle control, your throttle control cable will come in from this clamp. I'm going to tie into this screw into this hole which right here on this round piece and that's what's going to set your uh, that's how your throttle control is going to work usually the best way to do this is to hook it in here leave this loose set this to full throttle like this which is actually it sets itself like that and just to take cable tight so it's set to full throttle that way you know you're going to get maximum full throttle and it should release it to idle and from there this is probably going to be harder to see, but this is where your actual governor spring is located. See, it's that big spring that's right there. It ties in on the governor arm in that second slot. You see, it ties in right here in that second slot that you see right there. It's a pretty neat feature in this camera. <laughs> and uh, then it runs over, connects on that tab. That you see right here it'll tie in right there on it so it's, it's fairly simple you can see it kind of see it better here And if you need to adjust the governor, 
follow my video on that and your adjustment will be right here and you pull this out and you, you'd push it in like this for for the full throttle that's the way it would go on this one it'll pull in so it, it works slightly different but the adjustment's going to be the same on it but you see there and right now it's set to idle so there's just very little tension and it's mainly from that idle spring when you set it to full throttle it should have quite a bit of tension on it like that so I think that explains the linkage the best I can explain it and uh, again right there is where that uh, vent tube will connect right there so now let's work on, look at the carburetor itself off from that one that's off the engine I'm going to go ahead and put this motor back together and we'll look at that carburetor off here in just a second all right, so after you remove the manifold and unbolt the carburetor, you're left with this. This is the carburetor with the fuel cylinder in on it. This is what this particular carburetor looks like. There are slight variances in it. You see this is a Nikki brand. Both of these are, as far as I know, yep. It's a Nikki brand. So now we're going to get to the actual cleaning of this. What I was saying, a lot of times you can get by just taking the, the top off on this. I'm going to get these four screws out and we'll... Look at that. Okay, you have a gasket here. I don't have a rebuild kit for this, so we're just reusing everything. This carburetor actually looks like brand new inside. Uh, on this piece here, you'll have to make sure all these little holes are cleared out. And the emulsion tube here and the nozzle and like you see a little bit of carbon here just clean all that up real good and this gives you access to the float which you can remove right here with this little piece this is more like a vehicle style float like you'd see in a larger vehicle carburetor this is where your needle valve would be at you can actually adjust the level of the float by bending this tab with this needle valve slides in so it's fully adjustable now you're left with the bowl of the carburetor as you see this is actually in really good condition and you, like, like I was saying you can clean most of this without actually taking the carburetor off because you can get all this with the with, with the carburetor still bolted onto the engine and manifold so you get it I always recommend trying that first, take the top piece off, because it gains you access to the, the jet and your your tube up here. And you can always use compressed air to blow out the bowl. You want to make sure you have safety glasses on when you're messing with carburetor cleaner, because it's nothing to play around with. So now we'll go ahead and remove this jet. I highly recommend picking up a set of jet tools. It makes things a lot easier. So if you look down this one hole right here, you'll see the small jet. It's actually more of like a nozzle, but you need to, you see you get a couple holes, one here, one down here towards the bottom, and there's a hole that goes through it, so you need to make sure all these passages are cleared out, and blow down through it this way, that way, and make sure it's spraying out, and uh, now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, fuel solenoid off. This gains access to the main jet. It's a three-quarter wrench. Pretty tight, usually. And it just screws out like this. This will be it how you replace this. If you're replacing the fuel solenoid, just remove your old one, unhook it from the wire, and put your new one back in. You'll have a little washer here to seal it. After you remove the fuel solenoid, you'll see you can reach in here. This is where the main jet is that and if you're unlucky like me the jet won't come out <laughs> but uh, it's going to look very similar to this it probably is not going to have this tube on it uh, but you just want to clean it out real good and make sure you can see all the way through it and if you can't get it out just stick the uh, straw from the carburetor cleaner in here and spray down through it and it'll clean it out the best it can a lot of times once you get the motor running the vacuum from the engine will actually clean it out too while it's running 
So uh, I'll go ahead and put this one back in and once you get your bowl cleaned out, you're pretty much ready to roll with them. It should be good to go. Some of these do have a uh, fuel mixture adjustment screw on it. This one actually does and you want to clean out that passage too. So you'll just uh, turn this screw completely out till it comes out and spray down through the passages and then put it back in and set it for one and a half turns out. That's going to be your best way to clean that. And if it has this cap on there that regulates how much you can adjust it, you can pop that off and get access to it like this. Then you see it's just a needle valve, all it is. You want to spray down through here the best you can and blow it out with compressed air. It'll come out right here next to the throttle plate. Then you're ready to put it back together. You want to start with your float and needle valve. If you're rebuilding it, it's going to be the same process as this. I'm just not replacing any of the parts. But it's pretty straightforward. I have other videos too on uh, rebuilding carburetors. I might give you more tips and everything and what I'm doing on this. I just wanted to share this particular carburetor with you. Then you're ready to put it back together. Make sure this goes down through that hole right here. Now you're ready to put the screws in there. I recommend just getting a couple of them started. That way you can kind of wiggle it around to get the gasket to go on it. And just run these down, just barely snug them. You don't want to go crazy with it. Alright, so I got them all ran down. So you just barely want to snug these. This makes things easier later if you got to take it apart again. And now we're ready to reinstall your, your fuel solenoid here. Just screw it back in here. Take your wrench. And again, just barely snug it like that and you should be good to go. When you, if you want to test this solenoid when it's out, Make sure it's working. All you have to do is attach this to your ground or neutral and connect the power here. And it should should pull in just like that. And if it don't, then your solenoid shot. But that's pretty much all there is to this type of carburetor. Then you just reconnect your choke and your throttle linkages. And you'll be good to go. So if you've got any questions or comments about this type of carburetor or governor setup on this engine, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks for watching guys, we'll catch you later.